Here we are, a house on the rock. A whole lot to see on your way in, that's for sure. All right, we are in southern Wisconsin at what I think is the greatest roadside attraction in America. We got lucky and they're actually doing their Christmas theming for the next month. So we'll get to show you it all decked out for Christmas. Now you actually view it in three sections. But they had a fire, so they said the third section's not open right now. We haven't even started the tour and we're already seeing several Christmas trees with different themes. These are all decorated with teddy bears. I've only been here one time and I do remember that the last time I was here was right around Halloween because they had it all decked out for like a, a Halloween experience that you could take in the evening as well. So this is kind of cool that they do this for all the holidays it looks like. All the big ones. So we're gonna see a lot of stuff. And he had, at the beginning, a, a vague idea of what he was gonna do and he just kept adding and adding and adding on to it. So there is an actual house to this that you see first and then it just goes into total craziness. So you start with kind of a little museum to Alex Jordan, the man that created it. At the urging of his mother. They do start you with a documentary on Alex destiny, and his and upbringing in Madison. And moved on. Feelings of restlessness and uncertainty about his life's purpose eventually guided Jordan to the peaceful rolling hills of southwest Wisconsin and Spring Green. Geologists say this lush green valley was once covered by a huge ocean. The waters eroded the stone and left craggy rock formations towering the valley floor. Alex spied one such unusual outcropping of rock called Deer Shelter Rock, and from that moment knew it would hold a distinct place in his life. One day the farmer asked what I was doing out there. I said how I admired the rock, how I like rocks. That day I leased it, gave him $20 to picnic on. It was not long before picnics were not enough for Alex. He felt the need to begin building the house of his dreams. And so began his lifelong endeavor. Alex's tireless efforts in building his house on the rock made for local legend. It said that he carried the masonry stones up the rock in wicker baskets strapped to his back. First, Jordan constructed a small studio on one end of the rock, complete with fireplace, but was not satisfied to stop there. In 1956, the entire property became available, and with the help of his parents, Alex purchased the 240-acre farm so he could expand beyond the rock and continue to build as he pleased. Here we see some items from his childhood and his upbringing, family members' photos, so here they have a whole section that's like a bookkeeper's area. That's because there was a woman named Gladys Walsh that as this got bigger and bigger, she had worked for Alex's father collecting rents and she became the person who ended up doing all the books here. This was her office. Oh, Katie just found where he built cars as well. Says he had peculiar sleeping habits. He'd sleep from 6 to 10, then again from 5 a.m. till 8 a.m. Spent a great deal of the night reading, drawing, and studying with a magnifying glass. These shutters decorating this room were actually handmade, hand carved from India. Here he is sitting beneath the house. Hard to believe this giant place used to be known as the shack. There he is working on it. Doing everything by hand. This was his love, Jenny Olson. Began a relationship that lasted till his death 50 years later. Was his helpmate and companion through all the struggles and good times. She created a home where he could work in peace and escape from the demands of his success. 
this video very well may end up being two videos where we show you the history and the living space and then we'll show you the other stuff in a second video. This is one of the Buddha heads, one of the early Buddha heads from the displays from 1963. So this is neat. So in the early 60s, he received a note from a guest who'd visited the house. The note said how much they loved it and wondered if he'd ever heard of the Vagabond House, a poem by Don Blanding. Alex was so taken with Blanding's poem that he copied it out longhand, even had some of the lines carved into the mantelpiece in the living room of the house. So we'll see if we can find some of that. Here's his passport, and it said he only traveled abroad one time, and that was to the Netherlands in 1971, where he was doing research on music machines. So Alex often visited workshops and various people where he could come up with new ideas or buy things, and it said that he would sit on this broken down chair that's up here that he refused to have repaired, and he would talk to people either during tours or he would take that and visit people. And that would, that's what he would sit in during his visits. This says that he was so frugal that one day he brought in this pair of worn out shoes and told his pipe organ technicians to cut up the leather for use in their work. And they just put him into deep storage instead. This was on Antiques Roadshow. As I push this button, it moves on its own. All right, we are. Let's go on in the house. Thank you. There's the front door. Lots of books. Lots of nooks and crannies in here. And lots of views. You definitely, they warn you to watch your head. You do. I'm a tall guy, so. This was a lot of work <laughs> for them to put all of these. This is wall to wall Santas. Down into the house we go. Wow. <laughs> Very festive. player piano and everything over here. What do you think, sweetheart? I don't even know what I'm seeing right now. There's just stuff in every corner. Well, this is obviously for entertaining guests, this couch right here. And then there's all kinds of Asian art all over the place. Look at the ceilings. Red carpet. There's a whole village down here, a whole Santa village. And then a whole orchestra over there. Isn't that crazy? How cool is that? Look at that, 
the cello is about to start playing. Takes us over to a kitchen area, it looks like. All Santa face mugs. A little bit of appliance action here. Yeah, full kitchen. Here's our old refrigerator. Old Westinghouse. Katie, what do you think of that guy holding the lamps? I know, isn't that crazy? Or the lady holding the lamps, I guess. Kind of reminds you of the front of a boat. So that's a section we were showing you when we first came in. We just opened the door, look at that. That blue glow to the door. And this takes you out into the little garden area. You walk around this section here and it'll take us to God of Happiness. Yeah, bring us some good luck. <laughs> this is beautiful. If I remember right, you see this garden at the end, the Japanese garden. So we're gonna follow this onto the next part of the tour. It is a beautiful Japanese garden though. It's quite a walk. <laughs> he really extended this place. He bought several farms next to the original property and just kept buying. Now we're coming to the next part of the house. Pretty amazing what he built. Look at all the stained glass too. bells wow little 
little Santa village down here. What do you think of that? <laughs> How cool is that? Kitty loves to collect nutcrackers as well. So this is one of my favorite rooms in the whole place. I love how he even incorporated a lot of the rocks into everything. And then more of those wooden walls that we found. India. Now we will eventually go down here because that takes you to a really cool effect down there. Actually, we might as well go now. That's the infinity room. So the infinity room is exactly like you would think. with a great view. And then look up here, up top, above Katie, there's actually a carriage up there and some furniture so back to the infinity room look at the cool furniture too makes two of us has the effect of just going forever because the room gets more narrow and then you hit a mirror. Well, an effect that looks like a mirror. You'll see, we're gonna stop right up here. Pretty awesome effect. Now we're gonna go see the rest of the house that we haven't seen yet. So we came in on this walkway here. And down here they also have a band that usually plays. I'm looking around, I'm not seeing a button. That's too bad because there's a giant dragon that goes through that whole orchestra. There's a piano and everything down there, but there's a dragon head. And there you can probably see. Wow. Looks wonderful. It's putting me in the Christmas spirit, that's for sure. Now 
would have been a little waterfall when he lived here, but they don't have any water going through there yet, or right now anyway. Whoa. Piano over here. Look behind us. Another full Christmas village. But look at the stained glass above it. Even incorporated one of the trees so they didn't remove the tree. Air blowing through here. They do have a upstairs, but from what I remember, we weren't allowed to go up there. Guess we'll find out. Tons of books. Oh, wow. Another waterfall. And this whole side over here is one long couch. And this side we have giant Buddha heads. And a cauldron for some reason. Oh, neat. Wow. Oh, wow. Wow, wow. I forgot. I haven't been here in quite some time. They're on Christmas overload. I love it. Even here. They use the cauldron to make like a gnome or something out of the tree. And look at this table. It's a dragon. And that would have been a waterfall as well. And that's what we just walked through. We just came from over there, walked our way all the way through here. And it looks like maybe they do have some of the stairs open over here. You can see it's more of the stained glass that he's using for a table here. Yeah, 
but we can go up. Something hidden in the wall here. Whoa, that stained glass. are all Santa Clauses. And it looks like they blocked off. There, There's a stairway there that they don't want you to use. So it looks like this didn't used to be here maybe. And you could go down that way. And then here's the stairwell that is blocked off. Seemed like I remembered one of them we weren't allowed to go up into. Too bad. Wow, look at this room. stuff everywhere. See why I said we'll have to probably turn this into two videos because just the house alone and everything we've seen up to here would be enough just for one video, just to pique your interest. And it looks like this way to go upstairs is also closed. Spring is the top one, and summer is this bottom one. You can kind of see we just came from those stairway steps leading up. We just came through there. They do do a nice job of kind of routing you to where you don't really run into anyone else. So that's kind of nice. All right, so we're gonna go down. Here's a little walkway over here. Which it looks like just allows you to see. Oh, there's little rooms back there, probably bedrooms. Oh, then the way that they want us to exit is down these stairs. So that just dropped us off out of this blue door. That's the one we entered from when we took that big long walk down here. So I believe 
this might have been pretty much all of section one. Just think, looking at those rocks right there, who would look at that and go, you know what, I'm gonna build a house inside of all that. That's crazy. And look down there, there's like some sort of little like hidden safe or something down there. Well, my friends, I hope you enjoyed our vlog today of the living space and the original home of Alex Jordan here at House on the Rock. Come back tomorrow. We just showed you section one. We are gonna show you section two. Have a great night and goodbye.